Hello everyone. My name is Ben Robinette and I work for the United States Embassy here in Cyprus. Do you like to look at the stars when out at night? On very dark nights, I like to look up in the sky and watch millions and millions of stars twinkle and sparkle. Today, we will read about an amazing scientist who looked up at the sky and changed the world. Our book is called What Miss Mitchell Saw by Haley Barrett and illustrated by Diana Sadika. Why don't you read with me? Let's go ahead and get started. What Miss Mitchell Saw, written by Haley Barrett and illustrated by Diana Sudica. Read with permission from Simon & Schuster. On the first day of August, in a house tucked away on the fog-wrapped island of Nantucket, a baby girl was born. Like all babies, this baby was given a name. Her parents whispered it to her like a gentle breeze, Mariah. At first, little Mariah knew only her mother and father, her older brother and sister, and the simple rooms of home. But as she grew, Mariah came to know her island. She rambled its gold dappled dunes, she breathed the fragrance of its wild roses. She listened to the creak of whale ships come to the harbor laden with heavy barrels and homesick boys. She knew the ships by name. The Anne, the Independence, the Washington. Mariah lived near town and often walked the long hill of Main Street down to the crowded wharves and back up toward the grand brick edifice of the Pacific Bank. Along the way, she passed the bustle of many shops. She knew the shopkeepers by name, Polly Burnell, Betsy Carey, and Eliza Riddle. At home, Mariah was trusted with tasks large and small Schoolwork did not always come easily, but she studied with determination. Mother took note of Mariah's steady ways. When her husband sought someone to assist him as he observed the night sky, Mother said to Mariah, Thee is one to help father. So Mariah and her father climbed up, up, up the steep attic stairs to the walkway on their rooftop, high above Nantucket Town. Together, they gazed at the night sky that cupped their island like a vast black bowl. Father taught Mariah to use a telescope. He taught her to sweep the sky carefully, bit by bit, as thoroughly as she would sweep a room for her mother. He liked to say, Thee must wonder, thee must watch closely, then will thee see and know for thyself. Mariah watched and she wondered. She saw for herself and was captivated. From then on, night after night, Mariah swept the sky. She made fast friends with stars that shone as if punched into the black with a whalebone needle. She knew the stars by name. Polaris, Rigel, Spica, She observed planets that glowed as steadily as whale oil lamps. She knew the planets by name, Mercury, Venus, Saturn. She marveled at the celestial phenomena that arched overhead like a whale's sparkling splash. She knew the phenomena by name too, Eclipse, Aurora Borealis, Meteor. Ship captains, home for a while from their whaling, relied on the Mitchells to help them navigate. They brought chronometers, costly timepieces with, made to withstand ocean voyages to the little house on Vestal Street. 
By her father's side, Mariah learned to rate the chronometers. Using a sextant and careful calculations, she determined their accuracy so that sailors at sea might establish their position and when their arduous work was at an end, set a course toward family and Nantucket town. Mariah knew the whalers by name, the Folgers, the Starbucks, and her own brother, Andrew. For a while, Mariah was a teacher, but she intended to advance her own education too. So she became a librarian. Her quiet hours at the Athenaeum were devoted to the study of advanced mathematics and celestial navigation. And year after year, when day was done and darkness settled over Nantucket, Mariah climbed the steep stairs to a rooftop to sweep the sky. One clear October evening, Mariah saw something new, a nameless patch of light, bright and blurry, not far from the familiar Polaris, a comet. She hurried to tell her father. My Mariah, she ex he exclaimed, thee must tell the world. The letter, bound for Boston, took two long days to leave stormy Nantucket. Half a world away, other stargazers scoured the skies. The King of Denmark had pledged a gold medal to any astronomer who discovered a new comet with a telescope. His name was Frederick VI. Finding one of those hurtling chunks of ice and gas was a rare feat, and many hoped to win gold and glory. In a grand observatory in Rome, an astronomer priest spotted the same bright bit of light. He immediately sent word to claim the medal. But Mariah had seen the comet first. The letter from Nantucket, dated two days before, the priest's sighting slowly made its way across the ocean. It passed hand to hand from the astronomers of Harvard College to the astronomers of England to the astronomers of Denmark. Mariah knew the Harvard astronomers by name. They were family friends. William and George Bond, Sir George Airy, the Astronomer Royal of Britain, and Professor Heinrich Schumacher of the Altona Observatory. She had not met the others, but knew them by name as well. While these men of science considered the dilemma of who ought to rightfully claim the medal, Mariah swept the sky. While they scrutinized the letter from Nantucket, Mariah swept the sky. While they consulted the astronomer priest of Rome, Mariah swept the sky. At long last, they concurred and affirmed Miss Mitchell's discovery, and so the heavy gold medal made its way across the ocean to Boston, to Nantucket, and to Mariah's steady hand. The King of Denmark sent it with his compliments. The medal was inscribed with the name her parents gave her, the name known to shopkeepers, to sea captains, to sailors, and to schoolchildren, Mariah Mitchell. And it bore the motto, not in vain do we watch the setting and the rising of the stars. Miss Mitchell saw a comet. The world saw her. The end. I had so much fun reading with you all today. I learned Mariah Mitchell not only discovered a comet, but changed the study of stars forever. I hope you learned something today. And I hope you'll join me and my colleagues here at the U.S. Embassy for more stories soon. See you next time.